Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and welcome to my channel, Deb Chanel. That's where you are at. And, of course, we have to put the disclaimers up there because we don't know what would be a bad video or what would be a good video. And Facebook just chooses, and YouTube just chooses to, you know, do what they want to do with your particular video. Um, just want to say thank you for coming by. Always supporting, especially my day ones. Y'all know who y'all are. Uh, you can definitely share and like this video. That would help me out a lot. Uh, but I need you to continue to subscribe on, subscribe on this channel. But I need y'all to go over to my other channel. Okay? Make it make sense. So if you haven't uh, subscribed to this channel, which is my second channel, please go over there and do so right after this video. Okay? It will help me out a lot. I'm halfway there. I just need to get over the other half. Okay? Oh, so I need y'all help. I need y'all to go on over there now. Show up and show out like I'll be doing over there. And subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on that channel. All right? Uh, but yeah, Make It Make Sense is my second channel. And I do uh, pretty much the same thing I do over here. But I may do a little bit of other commentary over there that's like lackluster, but it's still cool. You might get your little chuckle on here and there. But in case anything happens to this channel, I have to have a backup channel. You understand? Okay. And we got that clear and concise. We'll move on. We're going to move on to Kevin Kevin Costner. And he is honoring Clyde Davis. Okay. Yes. When I think of Clyde Davis, I think of him having Whitney Houston's uh, deceased body up in that room, 434. Okay. Which they have taken the name plate off of the door and I don't know if they use it for storage or they renting it out. I believe it would be my latter choice. They're still renting it out but um, I think they took the tag down of the door because it, it kind of got too much press. Too much press and people wanted to come and see even though they weren't going to see anything that was actually happening or had happened in that room. Uh, you know, people just be nosy as hell, you know? But anyway, we all are nosy to a certain degree. And y'all know I'm just straight up nosy, period. And I thank y'all for loving me for that. But yeah, Clyde Davis is having his honorary pre-Grammy celebration, okay? Because I was looking for somebody else to get, you know, toe up from the flow up. And surprise, surprise, they're deceased and he's still carrying on a, um event <laughs> downstairs. So... I was too fit to be tied when I heard that had happened and all the comings and goings. And, you know, a few celebrities had spoke out about it. Uh, that was just distasteful for him to still have his party going on like nothing had happened. And the room was buzzing with, you know, Whitney Houston's no longer on this earth, that she's upstairs and, you know, we're partying. Now, how does that make sense? You know, I don't know how that makes sense. But anyway, we got um, Kevin Costner over here honoring um I guess Whitney Houston as well as uh, Clyde Davis. And thank you him for being an instrumental part of having Whitney Houston a part of his bodyguard uh, movie that he had put out there. Because I had heard now Diana Ross wanted that part. And Kevin Costner said he abandoned the whole film. Because <laughs> Diana Ross had to be his leading lady. Yes, I did hear that, honey. And I, I can't too much blame her. I can't too much blame him, okay? Because she was kind of seasoned, you know what I'm saying? And him having to have to perk her up and, oh, yeah, it would have been too much. It would have been more of a diva diva, a seasoned diva moment. So I can see him not wanting to do that. But anyway, we're going into the article that Variety 
Kim.com brought out for us. Uh, J. Kim Murphy wrote it up for us. And she titled it, Kevin Costner Honors Whitney Houston in Moving Speech to Clyde Davis. Thank you for being her bodyguard. Now, there will be a lot of people that will be like, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. No, 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 no. Okay, that's what they would say. I've been looking at him like, what? I hold him responsible to a certain degree for Miss Whitney not being here as well. So I don't know where he going with that. But, I, you know, I guess he had to do what he got to do to stay in the lap of luxury he's in and and uh, being, you know, one of those troopers that goes through the hell and the fire and still have to um, have a sane space. Uh, when it comes to talking about somebody who's supposed to be a legend in the music industry as well as film. So, Kevin's been around for a very long time. He knows how to play the game, what to say, what not to say. Okay, but we go on back to the article. It says, Kevin Costner honored music executive Clyde Davis at Davis's annual pre-gramming gala at the Beverly Hilton on Saturday evening. Thanking Davis for providing guidance to Whitney Houston since their collaboration on 1992's The Bodyguard and Shivering, the film hit song, I Will Always Love You. Costner's speech for Davis touched on the music exec's long storied career and the pair's personal relationship. The tribute carried particular weight in the room as Houston died on that night, or died on the night of Dan Davis's pre Grammy gala in 2012. Yes, because he died. She died in February of 2012 at that particular hotel. And Clive still kept that party going on. Whoo, I'm like, they should have took him to the hospital to ask, was he kind of feeling okay? Because that's something like most people would not do, you know, just out of respect. But anyway, he continued on with the party. That last statement. It was mine. It wasn't in this person's article. We're going back to the article. It says, Neither one of us in the end can protect your beloved Whitney, but your fingerprints on her life are clean, my friend. Costner said, You were a miracle in her life. Thank you for being her bodyguard, Clive. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we could tell a lot of more stories about that, but we ain't going to go there. We ain't going to go there. But anyway, it says later in the evening, Jennifer Hudson also paid respects to Houston, giving a stir stirring of performance of the singer's greatest love of all. Read Costner's full speech below. Yeah, we're not even going to cover Jennifer uh, and her comments and goings on what she felt she could do with Whitney Houston's song. See, Whitney Houston is the voice, okay? That's just like Luther Vandross is the male voice. You cannot substitute and you cannot replace. You got to have the real deal, McCoy. Okay, so... They can try all day long, every day, all day. But guess what? They will never have the caliber that Luther Vandross uh, had put out there for the world of masses internationally known as well as Whitney Houston. Nobody can touch the voice. She will always be the voice, and we will always remember her as the voice. So we want Jennifer Hudson to bag the elf up, okay? But that's just me. I'm loyal. To the people I want to be loyal to. Okay, we're going back. We says uh, to this article. It says the first time I ever in this room. No, I'm sorry. Kevin Costner's speech below. The first time I was ever in this room, I was in a rented tuxedo and watched Gregory Peck receive a lifetime achievement award. I was in awe. Honestly, I remember walking the red carpet that night and saw the blinding lights of cameras going off. They were all focused on him. Attic Fitch. Atticus Fitch. I've never seen anything like it. I don't think a single person took my picture as I passed the same spot. Well, Kevin, they probably didn't take your picture because you weren't at the caliber that you are now, son. That you are now. We're going back to the article. I've been here many times since, and I don't think I've ever felt that way again until tonight. Looking out at everyone, understanding we've all had our journeys. And somehow I find myself standing here at the party of parties. Uncertain, unsure, if I'm worthy of introducing Clyde and honoring him. Okay? Well, if you're a part of that world, I guess you do have to honor uh, the masses. that do some strange things for change. To keep y'all in y'all lap of luxury. So, hey, this is what it is. Isn't that so, fam? It's, isn't that so? <clears throat> These stages were expired to this room. 
where so much and so many have been celebrated can be one of the loneliest places in the world. And sometimes the only way we can find ourselves stepping out on them is if someone other than ourselves believes, imbues us with magical thinking that we belong. Some greater faith in ourselves that we can't muster alone. That's Clyde. And I can say, um, Costner actually was at Whitney Houston's uh, funeral, and he gave a most impressive, eloquent speech about Whitney Houston. I was so impressed. I mean, I you know, if I didn't like Bobby Brown so much. I was like, girl, Whitney, you got to snatch up Kevin Costner, girl. You got to snatch him up. Because, you know, the movie The Bodyguard was like, both of them fit hand in glove. Hand in glove. But that's just me. I'm going to get on back to this article, okay? I, I get off tantrum. I get off topic sometimes, you know, because it, it's hit me. And I got to say what I got to say. And sometimes y'all like it, sometimes y'all don't. But y'all good? Y'all fam still? We got to agree to disagree. But anyway, let me get back over here. It says, uh, nobody wants to put your life in reverse when you've been as successful as Clyde. All the world sees is this. But somehow, this guy who has meant so much to so many in this room had to find a way to move forward. When he found himself alone too early in his young life, he had to find a way to replace the loss to hurt. He needed to find a way to recover from that blow. No one was bidding on Clyde Davis except Clyde. And somehow, through it all, he stumbled into a dream that became his yellow brick road. Okay, you should be celebrated, Clyde. As a man who played fair in the lives and careers he promised to build, he never pretended that you were them. It's that understanding, that behavior, that care and attention to details that allowed the artists around you to flourish. That awesome promise to protect that manifests itself in this army of music seated here tonight. It's important that he hears the love coming his way. It's not so important to, for him to find the next single tonight. No demos in your pocket, please. There's no single here, Clive. There's no hook for the movement. Let this just be your... No, let this just be you for a couple of more minutes. It might be a surprise, but I don't know Clive as well as most of you in this room. On the surface, we didn't have much in common at all. We certainly shared a few things without knowing it. We both love music. I can't dance very well, and then he can't dance at all. Well, hell, everybody can do a little two-step. Don't say you can't dance, because two steps are in. You know what I'm saying? And slide to the left. Mm. Slide to the right. Mm. Crisscross. Mm. <laughs> do a, 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 what do you call it? Hollywood shopper? Mm-hmm. It only takes two legs, two feet, and you got a two-step. But that wasn't in this person article. I'm just tripping off, you know. Like I do. I always trip out. Oh, uh, let's see. Where were we? Where were we? Okay. And we were both struck by Whitney the first time we saw her. Our journey towards each other started the day Lawrence Castan gave me the script of The Bodyguard and the day Clive signed Whitney Houston. Whitney would be our common ground. And from that moment, the elements were in play that would one day come together like a force of nature so powerful that the entire world, for one period of time, it seemed, was focused on this little country song. How do any three people find each other in this world, in this business? It really doesn't matter who we are or where we begin. It's only about the intersection, how we come together and what we make of that faithful union. Whitney has become the most celebrated singer of her generation, but she was also an untrained actress, and it was unclear if this was something that she should aspire to, or even something that was good for her career. All three of us would take a huge leap of faith. Maybe the biggest, the hardest, was for Clyde. I needed to believe that I could make the movie that I was imagining. Whitney saw it as a chance to reinvent herself, but for Clive, it was a career move that had a recipe for a disaster written all over it. I needed Clive. I needed his trust and his blessing, and I needed the one thing that he wasn't used to giving up, which was control. All the things he's known for, all the things he's done for so many in this room, all the things that make him great, that would not be the ground he was standing. We were Set up to be mortal enemies, if you think about it. 
This could only go one way, and if it didn't go right, I would have never been invited. For Clive, the bodyguard would always be about the singer. It would be about Whitney, and that was all right with me. My mother had her own view of it, but I asked her to stay out of it. But in this instance, Clive was right. If Whitney didn't work, the movie doesn't. Okay? All right, that's some good insight. Very good insight. Because I think Whitney would have, if she would have lived, you know, past this point uh, when she was uh, made to be deceased, uh, she probably would have got into some more movie roles because she was fantastic. She was fabulous in The Bodyguard. I couldn't think of anybody else with her caliber of a vocal presentation. And then she's playing an artist who's being stalked by, you know, a unrelentless fan. Okay, but then we go on. We're going back. Um, the clarity that single-mindedness is what I love about Clyde. It's a language I understand when it's thoughtful and smart. It's what we all wanted out here in the unforgiving town. Someone who could see us as we are. Someone who was willing to put us first. I felt that from Clyde when he threw his soul into a song he was unsure of at first. His belief in me and what he heard overruled any pettiness a normal executive might have had. A lesser man would have dismissed or picked another single, but not Clive. He refused to let it he, he refused to let his ego stand in the way of his artist's opportunity and single handed drove that song and helped carry the movie to success. I Will Always Love You was number one in the world before the movie even came out. And thanks to the magical a uh, musical guidance of Dave David Foster and the voice that came out of that little body that night in the studio. We have a performance of a lifetime. We're all chasing dreams here, rarely crossing paths, but sometimes we do through fate or destiny. When we met Clive, it altered our lives for the better and in some cases forever. Clive, not just a man of his time, but maybe more importantly, a man who changed the times he lived in. He did it by listening. He did by believing in himself and never believing he was you. He believed in the special gift his artist uh, was blessed with. The only thing better than being one of the artists is making, maybe being his friend. We were an odd couple for sure, but we shared intimate trust in each other. We kept our unspoken promise to each other when so much was at stake. And now I say something I never say said to you before. Maybe this isn't the room, but I don't want to miss that moment, and it's from my heart. Neither one of us in the end could protect your beloved Whitney, but your fingerprints on her life are clean, my friend. You were a miracle in her life. Thank you for being her bodyguard, Clive, and for every person in this room you have stood behind and stood for. Everyone in this business has a mom, but not everyone gets a Clive. You need to come out there. This is your stage. I mean, you need to come out here. This is your stage. Now, <laughs> Woo! An elegant speech, if you were to believe anything he said about Clive. Because a lot of people think Clive knew something about Whitney's death. Or allegedly orchestrated it. I mean, my thing was, when a person died, the cops come, they decide if it's a homicide, suicide, whatever side. And then they quickly take the body out of the place it was found and strictly take it to the morgue and possibly, you know, notify the uh, victim's um, family members and then more than likely if they felt it was a homicide, they would do an autopsy. Well, in this case, from what I'm told, witness body stayed up there throughout the whole entire night. And that's something to say about you know, rituals and things of that nature, and water being a factor. Because they said they found her in the tub, uh, naked. But to let Leola Brown, which is her ex um, sister in law, when she was married to Bobby Brown, but Leola doesn't consider herself ex. They say once a brown, always a brown. And I think Whitney even said that too, maybe at uh, Bobby Brown's mother's funeral. Okay, because she did show up and she showed out and gave a little rendition of her voice. Her voice, her vocals, okay? Um, 
And I think it's something that uh, Bobby Brown will always remember. Because I don't think he's, he was ever over with and he could ever be over her. Because uh, from what Leola said, she was pregnant, y'all. She was pregnant and they were going to get back together. But on this unfaithful night, you know, she was um, slain. Uh, I don't think it was a suicide. But, you know, it is what it is. People think what they want to think. Uh... But that's all I had for this, guys, you know. Uh, it's kind of sad. I hate to see February roll around. Uh, one, because my deceased aunt, who I loved her so dearly, like mom, uh, it was her birthday month, February 24th. And then Whitney, I think, died on the 12th of February. So February is just like a lackluster type month for me. I'm all over the place for the negative, you know, because I'm grieving. But that's all I got. I ain't got no more, and I'll see y'all on the next video.